Hello everyone, I'm Marcel, you can see me in the bottom right corner and I'm the tutor for this tutorial on kernel rich regression for materials property prediction and I'd just take the next couple of minutes to walk you briefly through the tutorial so you kind of know what to expect. If you're taking this tutorial in a setting where there's supervision, um, I'm probably the guy that you can come talk to if you have any questions, so don't hesitate. If anything is unclear in this, uh, just come to me and we'll talk about it. So, in general, um, this tutorial has basically three parts. First, we will give, we will look at Cranberry regression in general, and here the tutorial is trying to give basically a pragmatic introduction to Cranberry regression. So, not too much mathematics, not too much background, just really trying to get to the bottom of what it actually is and how it works. Then, in the second part, uh, we are looking a little bit more in detail at what you need to do to use kind of rich regression with materials. So we look at how to describe crystal structures in order to do regression on them. And finally, we are looking at um, the NOMAD 2018 Kaggle Challenge dataset. So we basically thro go through all the steps of developing a model, finding the parameters, and then looking at the results to see how we can evaluate them. All right, um, let's just start from the top. So that's, uh, let's say the introduction. There's a little bit of what you should know before you start the tutorial, just so you know what's going on. Basically, if you know a little bit about materials, a little bit about machine learning, and a little bit about Python, it's quite useful. But you can, of course, just dive right in, and if anything seems confusing, you can ask or just um, Google it. I mean, you're already in a browser. Google is just one tab away. So I encourage you to just uh, throw anything that seems kind of suspicious into Google and see what happens. Also, at the end of each chapter, there is usually a section with further reading. So if you need some background information, you can just look there. And if you have trouble tracking down the PDFs or something, like maybe come talk to me. Maybe we can sort something out. So, kernel rich regression in general. Um, there's a few different ways to describe it, but what I think is the easiest if you just is if you just think of it as a basis expansion. So here, let's say f is a function that we're trying to predict or that we're trying to approximate, and we approximate it by placing a kernel function, that's this k here, on every training point with some weight alpha, and then we sum it up to get our prediction. And you can see this here in an actual plot. So these are the kernel functions. So we have a training point here, so we have a kernel function here. And in this case, our kernels are just Gaussians. So they're basically just these nice normal distributions. We place one here, we place one here, we place one here. And here, the weights, so the height of this distribution, is basically just chosen by hand to somewhat approximate this. Now, of course, now of course then the question is, how do we get to these parameters? And the answer is essentially, we phrase it as an optimization problem that can be solved analytically by basically matrix inversion. And then we arrive at some, some way to obtain these weights. And here, for example, are the optimized weights. And you can see this is a much better fit. Uh, let me fix that. OK. So, so that's that. Then we introduce the concept of regular, regularization, which is essentially a way to force the model to, to deal with noise. Because essentially, if you don't do it, you have the model wants to fit every data point exactly. But if there's noise, like here, so red is what we actually is the actual function, and these dots are the training data. And you see there's some noise in the training data, so they are not exactly on the line. Now, if our model goes through all the points separately, it gets very wiggly, which is usually not really what we want because we want some kind of smooth interpolation. And so, essentially, what we want is we want to say to the model, okay you can have a little bit of leeway in trying to find a good fit that doesn't go exactly through the points, but that goes sort of in between all the points. And you can formalize this, and we do this here, and in the end you arrive at a fit that's a little bit less wiggly and a lot more smooth and a lot more reasonable. Then there's a little bit about how to implement this sort of stuff. And then we move on to the last topic in this sort of overview, current rich regression section, that is hyperparameter tuning. So hyperparameters are all the parameters that are not directly determined by the data. So in this case, for, for current rich regression, there are two hyperparameters. There's the width of these kernel functions here. And then there's the degree of regu regularization, so the amount of sort of wiggliness that we allow the model to have. And we can, and then we discuss some strategies on how to find these parameters, 
how to how to turn this also into an optimization problem and so on. There's you can guess some parameters and you can get a feeling for it. Then we look at how to do a grid search to find the parameters and so on. So that concludes the first section. All right. So the second part is representations in kernel regression, because essentially when we try to fit um, structure property mapping, so let's say we have some different um, geometries of a crystal structure and we're trying to predict some property, the question is how to put this structure into the machine learning model, because essentially, physically speaking, the, mo the system is defined by the bases and by the positions in the unit cell and by the charges, but these are not really good descriptors to the fitting on because they're not unique. And so we have representations that sort of take care of um, being invariant to all these symmetries like rotation or translation and so on. We don't go through through this in a lot of detail because it's a very it's its own topic and it's not the main focus of this tutorial. But you need to know a little bit about it. Then there's a question: How to define kernels between structures, which is somewhat related to the question of representations, and we also discuss this. And then there's a lot of further reading you can do of this um, as a topic that interests you. There's a large number of papers on this. And then finally, we come to the sort of more applied section of the tutorial. So here we essentially recapitulate um, this Kaggle challenge. Maybe I can actually open this for a second. Hmm. Yes, so here this was a Kaggle challenge in 2018 by the Nomad Center of Excellence with actually money to win. And here the challenge was to predict the formation energy and band gap energy for materials that are transparent conducting oxide um, candidates and um, we are essentially going to use this data set and try to see if we can also compete in the challenge and in the end see if we can get close to the the winners of the challenge. So here um, we go through a little bit of technical detail then we actually look at the data set so at the distribution of various properties like the number of atoms, the charges, um, the space groups, the actual energies, in order to get a feeling what the, what the data set is. Then we decide what we actually want to do, which is always important. Like You always need a plan. You can't just go. You need to sort of agree with yourself in, adva in advance of what you're actually trying to achieve. Then we talk about how to optimize the hyperparameters. We introduce Camel Kit, which is a little toolkit to do these hyperparameter optimizations. And then we get a model, and then we look at the outputs of the model, and maybe I will not spoil how we actually do. You can find this out for yourself. All right, I think this basically covers the tutorial. Um, so if you have any questions, as I said, if this is live, you can just talk to me on a Zoom or something. Otherwise, my email address is in the tutorial, so if you have any questions, just get in touch, and I'm sure I can help you, or at least I can point you maybe in the right direction. Goodbye.